How's it going guys? We have a past level question for farm slash micro for step one, as well as internal medicine for 2CK. It's fair game to at least know this diagnosis and how to treat it, albeit the mechanisms of action not going to be asked this way. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 42-year-old woman, two-week history, non-productive cough. She was prescribed azithromycin a week ago to no avail. She has no past medical history, temperature 100 Fahrenheit. She lives in Ohio, frequently goes to the park to feed the pigeons. Most appropriate pharmacologic therapy is which the following mechanisms of action. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. So I say inhibition of 30S ribosomal subunit, wrong fucking answer. This refers to aminoglycosides, tetracyclines, could do a very lengthy discussion. Aminoglycosides, gentamicin, tobramycin, amikacin, the target gram negative rods. And you could be aware that Gentamicin plus vancomycin, that combination, is used empirically for endocarditis. Aminoglycosides cause acute tubular necrosis as well as ototoxicity. The tetracycline antibiotics, lengthy discussion, of course. Uh, you could be aware doxy is classic for Lyme disease, also for Rocky Mountain spotted fever. They can cause uh, photosensitivity. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B inhibition of 50 S ribosome, so you know wrong answer. So long discussion. Linizolid, chloramphenicol, clinomycin, the macrolides. So here, uh, azithromycin was given, that's a macrolide. So uh, you should know that the community acquired pneumonia empiric treatment is azithro, classically. That's that's also asked directly on the NBME for 2CK that this will cover strep pneumo as well as the atypicals, mycoplasma, legionella, chlamydia, pneumonia. Okay, but uh, clearly, we don't have any of those uh, etiologies because it's a throat in work. So, long discussion. Clindamycin, classic answer for pulmonary abscess. Chloramphenicol can cause gray baby syndrome. Linizolid, non existent, Yosemite. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C inhibition of beta glucan carbohydrosynthesis. Wrong answer. This refers to the echinocandins, which means caspofungin, mycofungin. I would say these are the highest yield antifungals on USMLA. Okay, they love caspofungin on the farm slash micro component on the NBME exams. All right, they don't give a fuck about use cases. They care about mechanism of action. That's my observation. In theory, you could use them for invasive aspergillosis candidemia, but as I just fucking said, they don't care. They'll just say caspofungin was given, and they just wanted the mechanism of action. It's just beta-glucan carbohydrate synthesis or cell wall synthesis for the fungal cell, okay? Cell wall synthesis. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, formation of membrane pores, wrong answer. So we talk about antifungals. This refers to nystatin, amphotericin B. Nystatin, mouthwash used for oropharyngeal candidiasis. Topical nystatin used for vaginal candidiasis. Uh, you can give amphotericin B. So it's exceedingly high yield. You know that amphotericin B is the hardest hitting antifungal. It's used for disseminated fungal infections, patients who are immunocompromised, who have fungemia with high fever, patients who have cryptococcus neoformans meningitis. Okay, so CNS fungal infections, disseminated fungal infections. We give hard hitting amphotericin B. Okay, so amphotericin B as well as nystatin, those are the ones that poke holes in the ergosterol cell membrane of the fungal cell. Ergosterol is the cholesterol equivalent in the fungal cell membrane. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, P450 mediated demethylation disruption is the correct answer. So this refers to azoles, fluconazole, okay? So this is just gonna be histoplasma, presumably, Ohio, Mississippi River Valley, pigeons I've seen on the NBME exams. They can say spelunking, caves, Okay, so we don't need to have any specific diagnosis here. We just assume this is fungal, especially since azithro as empiric for walking pneumonia, right? She's otherwise young and healthy, young enough, okay? And she's just healthy, generally no past medical history. And we assume maybe she had a mycoplasma, but azithro didn't work. So, oh, okay, Ohio, pigeons, maybe it's fungal. So we'll try fluconazole in this case. Now, this answer, P450 mediated demethylation reaction, is an answer on one of the NBME exams. You need to know azoles inhibit the conversion of lenostrol to ergosterol, which is an enzyme called 14 demethylase. Okay, and then, but this answer throws students by surprise because it sounds a little bit weird, but it's exceedingly high yield. 
you need to know that's what azoles do, okay? So you've got squalene via squalene epoxidase goes to linostril. That step's inhibited by terbinafine. Terbinafine can be used topically for tinea pedis, as well as orally for onychomycosis, which is nail bed fungal infections. Then you have linostril goes to ergostrol via 14-dimethylase, and that's azoles, okay? And azoles are just a broad treatment, okay, for lots of different fungal infections that are otherwise uncomplicated. Okay, so it's a generic go-to agent. As I said before, if there's high fever, 103, she's got rigors, chills, she's got meningitis, we go amphotericin B. But this is just standard fluconazole, okay, very generic, typical first-line agent used for a variety of fungal infections. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.